Up until last year, I did not believe. I used to have hatred towards the people from the Universal Church, even a sense of repulsion. I did not follow any religion, and I did not believe in Jesus. Three months ago, from a Saturday to a Sunday, my daughter's oxygen level started dropping rapidly. We took her to the emergency room at a hospital near our home. When they x-rayed her lungs, they initially said the machine was faulty, but my daughter was struggling to breathe. They gave her an oxygen mask and some antibiotics. As hours passed, there was a change. A new doctor examined her and said, Listen, your daughter needs to be moved to the ICU. I asked, But why? She replied, it's not the machine that's faulty, it's her lungs. The following day, there were no available ICU beds. At that point, I was still smoking. Standing outside the hospital, I looked towards Jesus and said, Jesus, if you hear me, I'll give my lungs to my doctor. I promise I'll never smoke again if she gets a place in the ICU. I threw away my cigarette and when I went back inside, they told me they had found an ICU bed. It turned out she had contracted a bacterial infection as well as a fungal infection in her lungs. 90% of her lungs were compromised. As days went by, her condition only worsened. She had to be intubated and went into a coma where she remained for 19 days. When she was transferred to the ICU, the doctor turned to me and said, Mom, her condition is extremely serious. She will not survive. I responded, Doctor, I have faith. You will see a miracle. My husband would attend church to have water blessed as I wouldn't leave the ICU. I will drink the blessed water, pour some over her and pray. Her lungs will clear up. I was so at peace that the hospital staff called the psychologist to speak with me, thinking something was wrong. But I kept saying, my God is alive and I am sure of a miracle. I told the psychologist, if you want to sit and talk with me, feel free, but I don't need it. You would drink water on her behalf. Yes, because we would watch the Sunday services with Bishop Macedo. And someone had shared a testimony about doing the same. I heard that testimony and thought, I'm going to do that. So, I would drink the water and say, Lord, let this water reach my daughter's lungs. My father, fill this water with your anointing, with your power, and may there be salvation in the hospitals, in homes, and in families. May your power, my father, reach the wounded, the afflicted, and the disillusioned. Through this water, may you work in the lives of all those who use it. Before my daughter was discharged, 24 days later, the doctor said to me, Mom, it was not me who saved your daughter because she could not be saved. It was God. It was the water used with faith that my husband brought to me while I stayed at the hospital. Look at what the doctor yes, said. Yes, that's what he said. Hearing that from a doctor's mouth. He was the one who said it. It was God. It was your faith, your husband's faith, and your faith that saved your daughter. A miracle from God. There's no explanation. It's trying to explain the inexplicable. It was so incredible that I thought, I cannot believe what I'm seeing. It truly was a miracle. Before going into a coma, my daughter had been using a walker because she had thrombosis in the past and had been confined to a wheelchair. She wasn't able to walk for six months due to a broken tibia. We brought that walker to the hospital, but when she left, after almost dying, she didn't need it. She was jumping, dancing, and I found myself telling her, Daughter, do not do that. But she said, Mom, I feel great. I feel alive. I was in shock, thinking, my goodness. The miracle of the water happened just three months ago. It was a miracle, and I can say with absolute certainty that Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit came into my life. It was something I never thought possible. I now know I have a father, and I can declare this with conviction. The best thing that ever happened to me was getting to know him. Until last year, I did not believe. I had a hatred towards people from the Universal Church, and I did not believe in Jesus. This year, we started tuning into Bishop Acedo's services on Sundays. I would listen while washing the dishes, 
Slowly, a seed was planted until one day, Bishop Lacerda spoke about forgiveness. When he said I needed to forgive, it was one of the hardest things for me to do. When I was a child, I had a very violent stepfather who abused me from the age of 7 to 21. I carried a lot of anger because of that. As a teenager, I tried to commit suicide. I would cut myself and do anything to harm myself because I felt so alone. Later, as an adult, I was raped. When my stepfather died last year, I called the funeral home to confirm his death and I thanked God he was gone. I had been shackled by resentment and did not realize how much it was harming me. I could smile and be kind to everyone, but I carried hatred in my heart all the time. That was until I heard Bishop Macedo, that little old man I used to call crazy, talk about forgiveness. I wondered, how could forgiveness possibly make a difference? When I forgave him, the Holy Spirit came into my life and peace filled my soul. I could not understand what was happening at first. But then I realized the Holy Spirit was cleansing me. The hatred, anger and resentment were gone. I was able to hug my mother and tell her that I loved her and I could say the same to everyone else. That person I once was died the day the Holy Spirit entered my life and a new person was born. How long have you been attending the services? I think it's been about five months and it's made all the difference. Do you know why? It's easy for someone who was born in the church and knows the faith. But for someone like me, who never had any religion, and only believed in a harsh God. It's different. You see things in a new light. When that little old man spoke about forgiveness and it worked, I thought, my God, I cannot believe it. It's true, because I only believed those things I could see and touch. Everything changed. Everything. And I can say with absolute certainty that the Holy Spirit is the best thing in the world. He is the peace I had always been searching for. I never knew what it felt like to truly feel loved, but I do now. I feel loved by God.